off a of stream. All right. Um, I, you've played Final Fantasy VI before, right? It's been a while, so yeah, I'm like I'm familiar with like the very general mechanics and stuff. Yeah, I mean um, that uh, that's better than most, though. Uh, like <laughs> you, you, the important thing is you like you know the characters and like you remember like rough the rough story and everything, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and have you have you watched my stream before? A little bit, yeah. So like I'm. I, I get the very basic idea of a randomizer of right. like you're you're never gonna be sure in what order you get the dungeons the bosses and the characters. Yeah. Beyond that, so yeah. Okay, so the way Worlds Collide works is um, hold on one second I'm gonna turn down my in-game audio on my end because um, it's a little loud. Okay, that's better. Um, yeah, so the way it works with uh, Worlds Clyde is, uh, if you remember, like, the last third of Final Fantasy VI, when, like, you're in the World of Ruin and you get the airship, like, you can go just fight the final boss, but you can also go throughout the world and, like, recruit characters and do side quests. Like, it's very open world, the last third of the game. And that's kind of, like, what Worlds Clyde was designed around, was, like, that same idea. Um because it's a like open world randomizer um uh obviously and you can see right here like like it's under a it says unlock final kafka that means like to beat the boss we have to recruit six characters and uh find nine espers uh you can ignore the part about sid i'll, I'll explain that later that's a uh, that's something for gdq uh, specifically but the goal is we gotta find six characters. We have to find nine espers, and once we do, we can go find the, we can go fight the final boss. Um, and characters and espers are like typically found uh, at the end of dungeons um, or other like important story based areas. And uh, when you go, we call those checks. Like if you go through a dungeon, like um, you know Phantom Train, for instance. Uh, at the end of it, you know, you'll get either a character, an Esper, or a, like, high-level item. Uh, the latter of which is, um, is, could eventually be good, but we call them, we call those dead checks because they don't help you get closer to the final boss since, uh, obviously you need characters and Espers. Um, and, uh, what where you can go what checks you can do is completely related to what characters you have so as an example you can't go to phoenix cave if you don't have Locke, uh because like in the in the game in the story phoenix cave was tied to lock in his side quest um you can't do phantom train without sabin because that was related to sabin in the original game um and uh that kind of dictates where we go. What characters we have changes our route, which is how this is kind of different each and every time. Um, it's kind of like the, okay, that's the, cool. So you see, so you are actually choosing which dungeon to go to next. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's like kind of that's that's like the big important thing to wrap your head around. That for a lot of people it's confusing, especially like if that's not explained because you're like, why are you going here? You're like flying to another random area of the game and then flying to another area. Um, it's all based on what characters I have and what checks they have available. And when it comes to speed running, not all checks are equal. Some are really good because they're fast or they have other advantages. And some are, like, not great um, and, and everything. And so that, like, is, is being factored by me while I'm, like, playing. I'm trying to figure out, okay, where should I go next? What's the best checks available you know, what's fastest, what maybe can give me more treasure, you know. Um, some checks uh, you can find out what reward or get a clue to what reward before you do the check. Uh, we, we call those peekable checks. So, like, that might factor in where I decide to go if I, if I can beforehand look and see uh, what it is. Because, especially near the end, I might have six characters, but I might be, I'm, I might be down a few espers. And uh, getting more characters is just kind of a time waste. So, if I can, like, do checks that I can peek beforehand and see what they are that, you know, can be, uh, could be good. Um, 
but that's like kind of the quick briefing uh, of kind of how it works. So I can just start diving in. I, I'm going to have a timer, but I'm not really speed running it. I'm going to be like kind of taking it slow and casual in places. Um, Cause like when I did my GDQ video and I was actually speed running it, it's like 20 minutes of nonstop talking uh, as you're like doing different things. Um, so the first thing, hold on my tracker. Okay. Now it's working. So the first thing is like, I'm looking at what characters I have and I can see, I'm like been trying to figure out what, what checks I'm going to do based off that. And I'm readjusting my sound settings again, cause this is still a little loud. Okay. And, uh, question, shouldn't you be ending every sentence with Kubo or something? Uh, yeah, that's actually a good point. That's, that's my bad. Um, you know, especially cause I have Mog in my party. That's, you know, just kind of how he is. Yeah, um, like I don't want to tell you I live your life. <laughs> so, um, I always go and I check like my stats first, Mo more importantly, my abilities. Um, so characters all have new abilities, um, or, or they could have any ability in the game, including some other abilities that like NPCs might have, um, like, um, in the original game, Baron had the health command. That's that could be a possible one I, I can get. Um, characters have kind of randomized stats. They're like they could be uh, like it's, it's, I think it's a standard deviation of twenty five percent. So they could a given stat could be twenty five percent higher or lower lower than they are in the base game, uh, which means they're randomized. But like uh, for instance, like Mog has like pretty decent magic already. Um, so like you know his magic stack's gonna be kind of good. In this case, it is pretty good. Whereas, like, Celeste here normally has a pretty good magic stat, but it's actually very low here, so she got kind of, like, RNG screwed with a lower lower magic than she normally would have. Um, in fact, it's really low. Um, and then the last thing is, Maul can learn natural magic, uh, it looks like. Um, in the original game, only Terra and Celeste could learn spells by leveling up. Everyone else needs espers. So, Maul can learn magic, it looks like. Um, I don't know what spells yet, but we'll kind of see. And then I equipped uh, a Moogle charm on a character. Uh, in the original game, there was one Moogle charm and only Mog could use it. But if you equip it, you got no random encounters. Uh, we kind of changed it here where you start with three and anyone can equip it. So this way um, you can just choose when you do and don't get random encounters. Um, it, this way, in case you're wondering, like, why is Brian not getting any encounters? It's because someone has a Moogle Charm on them. And so, the, like, beginning of a run is uh, typically looting. Because we don't start with any real equipment at all. And we need equipment and we need money. And so, we go around to some areas that have a high number of chests and we start opening them. And we're hoping for either good items or items that might not be good, but they're very expensive, so we can sell them for money to buy good items. Um, so, like, I picked up a ribbon there, and I personally don't like ribbons, uh, but they are worth, like, 19k or something like that. So they're going to be really good. To, that one's going to be really good to sell to get some money to buy more uh, useful crap. Um, and that's kind of probably the first, like, six, seven, eight minutes of the, of the run is kind of looting and going to shops since shops are also randomized and uh you know we're looking for decent weapons de decent armor uh some initial items um different runners do different levels of looting uh i find um but early on i want to buy like the essentials um typically i go through and uh you know i buy status healing items I, I figure if i buy all my heal like healing items and phoenix downs and stuff like that early on uh then i'm just set for the rest of the run and i don't have to worry about them later so um because once i start actually going to dungeons i really don't want to stop and go back to the towns to um to check shops and everything so almost everyone goes to south figaro because south figaro just has a whole bunch of chests it's one of the highest like density uh density of checks in the game um and like i said uh shops are randomized and um therefore i'm kind of making mental notes what are in these shops um i used to write them down 
like what are some good items in some of these shops, but I kind of stopped doing that because I, I got pretty good at remembering because it turns out there's only a handful of items I really care about going back and buying. Um, and so like, I, none of those items interest me. Uh, same here. Um, you know, there's only a handful I really care about, so I can kind of look through the menus very quickly. Um, and that's just from like, a, you know, years of, uh, or a year of experience of playing. Um, we're going to have our first check in a second. Uh, like I said, every character has a different, um, different set of checks. They also have different number of checks. Uh, Celeste has five checks, but hers is a little weird. She has a dungeon that has three checks total in it. Um, so uh, she's a little bit weird, but one of them is right here here and we got a magicite uh from it and um and my tracker is just not updating so that's that's fine um that is what we call a free check there are some checks in the game that don't require any fighting that you can just go uh and go there and get a check and um don't have to fight a boss uh they're typically very fast, and you just saw right there, I basically got a magic site for free. Um, so yeah, they're, they're called free checks. The, they do have a disadvantage, um, and it's the one thing I haven't really explained about the randomizer, is if all the enemies are randomized and all the bosses are randomized, you might be wondering, what happens if I run into an endgame boss uh, early? And the answer is, we scale all the bosses, so... Um, proportionally so that they're weak early on and uh the way we do that is we call it uh progress scaling so i'm starting at level three and every other enemy in the game also starts at level three but every single time i uh i want to be here yeah whoops uh no actually i want to go down and check this first every single time i get a character or an esper every enemy in the game will level up two levels um so there definitely is a like a downside of getting too many uh, free checks or just watching your level to make sure if you're getting different it, that you're always kind of like ahead of uh, we call it like scaling. So right now every enemy is five and I'm level three, and especially early on those two levels are really going to matter a lot. So I kind of don't want to grab too many more free checks until I can get some. Uh, levels uh, in me. Um, so I'm going to do a bit more looting. I'm going to play it safe since it's a casual stream and probably do more looting than I need to, than I would do if I was going, uh, if, than if I was actually doing a race. Because um, obviously if you're looting, you might be getting good stuff, but that is all time that you're not getting more progress. So it's definitely a good balance of trying to figure out how much or how little you should loot. Um, Definitely a risk reward kind of thing. Yo, what's up, Double Down? Uh, Double Down here in chat is a um, is a member of our community. Him and I have done a bunch of uh, commentating before. We actually commentated the other night. Um, but he's asking about espers, and uh, I have two friends here in Discord, uh, Ben and John. Uh, ben is. Uh, played FF6 before, and so he might already know the answer to this question, but I'll I'll answer it, especially if I link to the VOD later or put it up on YouTube. Um, and Esper and Magicite are the same. They uh, It's a translation thing. Um, I don't know if in Japan if they share the same word, but in America they use the, you know, um, m m basically it's the same thing. I think story-wise there is a difference between them, but it's not really too important for this. Um, Oh, that's all I can afford, huh? And what it is, is uh, it's a combination of both our summons and our spells. Um, so when you find an Esper, uh, we found Unicorn. And so we know we can summon the Summon Unicorn, which will heal all status ailments, uh, which is not really useful. They might come up. Um, but also, it will have a list of spells on it, which I'll show. Um, I'll just show right now since we're doing this casually. And we can see right here that Unicorn will teach us two spells, Quake and Antidote. Um, 
Quake at, at a times six rate and Antidote at a times ten rate. So when you finish a battle, you'll most battles you'll get a number of uh, MP. And so let's say I finish a battle and I get five MP. Uh, since Antidote's times ten, that means we'll be fifty percent closer to learning Antidote. And with Quake times six, we'll be at thirty percent. Um, so that kind of dictates how quickly you learn magic. Also, this Esper has a 10% HP bonus, which means every time you level up, you'll get 10% more HP than you normally would. Um, so Esper's can have these stat bonuses, we call them. Um, overall, this Esper is not good. Um, these spells are not useful. Quake will hit both enemies and us and can do a lot of damage and simply not used. And the um, HP bonus is not very great. So unfortunately, not a very good Esper. Um, so hopefully we'll get better luck with some other ones. Um, Espers can have between either 1 and 5 and 2 or 2 and 5. Um, uh, with Worlds Clyde, we have a very robust flag set, uh, that is very customizable. Oh, Jesus Christ, that is cheap. Um, we have a very robust, customizable, like, flag set. And, uh, I'm running what we call Standard Race, which is kind of what it sounds like it's the standard flag set for uh racing um and i don't remember if two or one is the minimum um i just noticed that weapon shop there is a very good sword something that is not a sword that is not very good early on but will be good uh later so i'm making a mental note that we might want to come back here and pick that sword up um near the end of the game uh, it is unfortunately rather expensive so, like I said, I'm just going to be doing some looting just to keep things a little safe. Um, the thing I'm trying to figure out is where to go next. Um, where's my first check going to be? Um, okay, so a message in chat. Uh, you mentioned that some dungeons is possible to peak. Um, so that really depends on the given dungeon. Um, okay, I have my weapon there too. It really, like, it just depends on the dungeon itself. So, as an example, uh, we have Shadow here, and when we go do his check, about halfway through the dungeon, you can see what item, character, or Esper is there. Uh, which means you can walk about halfway through the dungeon, and you'll, you'll see it, and you can warp out or reset your game if you don't, you know, if you don't like what you see. Um, whereas Celeste, uh, for most of her checks, you only get the item when you beat the boss and there's no clue beforehand. Um, it really is dependent on kind of like how the game is in vanilla. It's, you'll, you'll see when we get, when we, I'll point it out when we get to a check or two, but it's like not every, ch not every check is peekable. Um, different dungeons and different checks all have different properties, right? Some dungeons are longer than others. Some are shorter. Uh, some dungeons might have more treasure. Some dungeons uh, might have multiple checks, like um, Shadow here. One of his is one of his checks is Floating Continent, which actually has uh, three chances at characters, espers, or items. Um, so his that is it's a lot longer. You have to fight multiple bosses, but you can potentially get more rewards from it. So uh, that is a uh, possibility um, as well. So I'll kind of point that out. Um, non people stuff is typically when you fight a boss and you just get the item afterwards because at that point they just they give you the item whether you like it or not um whereas peekable lets you at, lets you lead the dungeon before you get the item some dungeons are technically peekable but by the time you would see it it's so late in the dungeon it's not really a big uh time save at all um others you might be able to see at the very very beginning um so hopefully that kind of answered your question. It's I know it was kind of a nebulous answer, but it's a lot easier to see when we when we get to certain dungeons. Uh, some randoms you watch, uh, you buy stuff early to do damage. Um, yes, so I'm actually kind of looking for that right now. Um, there are some items in the game that uh, you can use in battle to uh do kind of a significant amount of damage early um 
elemental rods like the fire rod ice shield are uh some of them um elemental shields as well um can cast high level spells if you use them in battle and uh super balls are the other one uh super balls in particular is what i'm kind of looking for at the moment um in fact i'll probably just keep looking for them since i'm doing this all kind of casually anyway um because they will help me with some of the early bosses so one thing that I'm a little worried about at the moment, there's Super Bowls. One thing I'm kind of worried about at the moment is that I have, um, I've gotten two Espers, which means enemies are level seven and I'm level three. And that's kind of a big deal because, um, level three really sucks. Your stats are just horrible. Um, they're really, really bad. So I won't be able to beat most enemies, probably most bosses, honestly, with what I kind of have at the moment. Um, so that's why I was kind of looking for Super Balls here, because Super Balls do a random amount of damage, but they typically are going to do a lot of damage. And if they don't, I can just reset the battle and, like, try again. So because of that, I'm going to try to do a... I'm going to do a check that is only a boss and hope that I can kill the boss before it kills me by using Super Balls is kind of the hope here. So, uh, this is the first time I'm, I've really gone to a menu. Um, in Worlds Collide, uh, for speedrunning, you typically want to avoid menus when possible. I actually want none of these on you. Um, Menuing, it takes a long time to do. Um, actually, I want this on you. And you can see, like, I'm obviously have taken more time because I'm second-guessing myself and all that uh, dumb stuff um, as I equip different things. Um, so I try to save my menuing so I can do it all at once. So, like, I was doing all that looting, but I was never really going into a menu because there wasn't any need. I'm not, I wasn't going to fight any battles yet. So why go through and equip stuff um, if I'm just going to do it again? Or I'll wait till I want to save and equip a bunch of stuff then. So um, we're going to fight a boss here, which is why I was menuing. And you'll actually be able to see kind of what peaking is. Um, do I want to risk this? Well, we'll risk this fight. Yes, I'm glad I risked this one. So there are um, some chests that have monsters in it. Um, obviously, we call them monster in the boxes. Um, in the vanilla game, there were a whole bunch of, um, different chests that have monsters, and we still have the same monsters in the chests, just where those are located are, are randomized. Um, some monster in the boxes suck, um, some are really good. This one in particular is what I wanted, because they are completely beatable at a low level. Um, but they give experience. Unfortunately, Celeste died, so she's not going to get that experience, but everyone else will, which will make them a little more survivable come this boss fight. Um, so we'll see in a second what I mean by peekable here. Um, as I grab a few more chests, um, there comes a point with doing a run where you have to kind of decide when you stop looting. We're not at that point yet at all, um, but that's something to consider. So we see up here, uh, inspector, the little dog on the left, and then a soldier lying on the ground. Um, so this lets me peek here. Um, if this was a character, like let's say this was Terra, we would see Terra sprite there instead of a soldier. And if it was an Esper, we would see a little green Esper sprite instead. So this being a random NPC tells me it's actually neither. It is an item, uh, which means I don't want to actually fight here because it won't give me any progress. Um, it won't get me any closer to fighting Final Kafka. So I was able to peek this, and now I know I can warp out and go somewhere else that this check was dead so that's an example of peeking i got to avoid a boss fight i got to avoid um uh everything like that um so now i'm gonna go do another check i think um why well, not not that i think i have to so we're gonna go do a uh, floating continent uh, which is a little risky um i don't have a lot of checks left uh well, I don't have a lot of checks I, that I feel pretty good about at the moment. Um, I actually lied. I'm going to do Opera House. Um, this is a check I normally don't like doing because it's slow. But one, this is not really a speed run. And two, 
if you're going to do Opera House, you're going to do it early. Um, the reason for the reason why that I don't like it and why it's slow and why a lot of runners don't like it is it has what's called fixed encounters. So it has fights that are not boss fights, but you ha still have to do them. They are against regular enemies, but they're not random encounters. So that's slow. F you know, fighting enemies you don't have to fight is obviously a uh, slow thing. But we're low level, and we would like experience. We are now the same level the boss would be at, but if we'd be higher level, then we're going to hopefully do better against them. So because of that, doing this check early isn't as bad as doing it late because uh, we'll get experience out of them. So a lot of times we like to route, um, we like to route uh, fixed encounters in early into a fight um, or into our uh, game in order to get those uh, get that experience. Um, I actually think I don't actually want to do this fight now. That I think about it, I they might not give any experience if I remember correctly. We'll see. It, Those Super Bowls I have are one-time use, which is why I'm not using them here at all. But I don't have a lot of offense at the moment, so that's why my fights are just taking a lot longer. Um, hopefully, once I get a, a few levels, it will, they'll be a little bit better. Okay, I do get experience with this fight. Some fights you don't get experience with, and um, I'm not going to lie, I don't have every random battle memorized. Most people don't. It's uh, kind of a lot. Uh, that battle I knew I could run from easy, and since we'll be fighting a few more, and I don't need to fight every battle, I'm going to kind of run when I can. Uh, I could run from this one as well, and I will. With the Super Bowl setup, I'm a lot better set up to fight bosses than I am um, random enemies, which is why I'm kind of running from these uh, if I can. And so now we'll fight a boss... Um, a little nervous because I didn't get a chance to say it beforehand, uh, kind of just based on how this uh, this check is, uh, which is why it's not the best check. Because if if I had wasted a lot of time fighting those fixed battles and died as boss, and that's just time wasted, uh, which you know you don't like. Um, that's why this this check is not the greatest check in the world. But I got a few levels, which is you know why I decided to do it now. So we'll see, uh, who is this? Cool, so Tritok is not too uh, scary. Um, so the way Tritok is kind of set up is, that actually might kill him in a second. Let's see, if I can save a Super Bowl, I'd like to save a Super Bowl. So Tritok has a whole bunch of um, defense and he's immune to every element except for fire well yeah immune to every element except for fire so physical attacks won't do a lot of damage and any non-fire attacks won't do a lot of damage uh well won't do any damage so he is kind of like a damage check if you have fire you're probably good and if you don't you gotta start using defense ignoring attacks luckily those super balls were defense ignoring if i didn't have those i wouldn't be able to beat that fight honestly um, just the way he kind of set up. He's very defensive. Oh, so my this man, is... I have no fires. <laughs> this is not a character. Um, if it was a character, you would see the character sprite and said it's an imp, so we know it's an esper or an item, and it is another esper. So um, we now have two, and we'll check in a second to see what uh, that is. But now i gotta, I got to figure out where I want to go next. Um I'm going to go buy more Super Bowls because I still don't have a lot of offense right now, and I don't feel comfortable taking out bosses without uh, Super Bowls right now based on what I have. Um, this is an okay Esper. Cure 2 is pretty good. Um, and Strength plus 1, putting on someone early means that endgame they might have high strength so they can do a lot of damage with physical attacks. Um, but still no like real offense. In World's Clyde, offense is kind of key. You know, why bother healing and why bother out of defense? You just kill your opponent before he can kill you. Um, that's the fastest way. So 
Uh, that's good, but it's not going to help us with any bosses uh, kind of going forward. It's just kind of a good backup to have. Um, let me buy one more, if possible. What do I have that can sell for a lot? Oh, you. I'm greedy. Uh, four. Because we're going to have to fight three bosses. No, four bosses where we're going. Um, so I want more Super Bowls in case uh, in case the bosses are difficult. Um, so Floating Continent is a... It's a long check. Um, but you get three... You get three rewards from it. Um, so the first part of this is going to be... Four fixed encounters? Um, so this is slow. It's an auto scroller. We just have to wait until the fixed encounters happen. And then we're going to fight two bosses. And after that, we'll get our first reward. Um, so this isn't bad. Um, I don't really have a lot of multi hitting attacks, unfortunately, which makes this not as great of a fight. It's going to take a little bit. Good doggy. That's a ability unique to only Shadow, where um, if. Uh, Shadow gets a, attacked with a physical attack. There's a chance he can block it and do a counter attack uh, with his dog that typically does a lot of damage. So, um, unique, to, unique to only Shadow. We've talked about randomizing that ability so that a random character gets it uh, during the seed, but I don't know if that's actually in the works or not. Um, I, it would not be hard to do, I would imagine. Ooh. So, this is good. Um, early on, I bought these Revifies, which everyone buys early on because. This guy's undead, which means we can just use this on him and he'll automatically die. And he also gives pretty good experience. Actually, he did not give good experience. I was getting mixed up with a different uh, a different enemy. But, I mean, so, like, for fixing counters, we really want undead enemies because we can just instant kill them. It doesn't matter anything about our offense. Um, so that's kind of the dream. Uh, but, like I said, I don't really have a lot of multi-hit attacks at the moment, which means that these non-boss fights are a little slow, sadly. It'd be nice if I got some magic, because then I could easily, uh... Or I could kill them a lot faster. Um, I'm not having a problem killing them, but if this was a race, this would be very slow, and, uh, you don't like that. And that's kind of a big difference between, um... Like, speed running and casually playing it. There are definitely different strategies that we do because we are um, uh, because we're speed running. Goodbye. This boss is pretty easy, but I just wanted to finish him quick because uh, again, not a lot of damage. Luckily, we'll heal after this fight. We auto heal before the second fight uh, because we got to do two bosses in a row. Hopefully, the next boss is also not too difficult. Nope, it is difficult. This guy is a late game boss. Uh, it does more four on Super Bowls? I have no idea. Let's see. Assuming I survive this. No, I did. Okay, good. So, um, Morph increases damage by 50% while it's active. Um, basically, I have no idea if that actually impacts Super Bowls or not. Um, so we're going to hope this does a lot of damage and it hit the wrong person. So now we're not in a good state because I have not a lot going on right now. Um, and he has a lot of health still left from what I, what I can tell. So... Well, this might be a reset, unfortunately. I mean, we can see if we can survive, but I think he still has a good amount of HP left, and that's not going to do it, man. We can throw money at him, but I, I don't think that's going to be enough either. I actually did a decent amount of damage. Almost, almost a thousand. 
Normally I would reset out. Okay, cool, we did it. But we used all of our Super Balls, so I'm not very confident on whatever boss we end up fighting. We will get a lot of experience. Poor Shadow will not get experience, sadly. And now we can see our first uh, reward here, which you can tell right here is an Esper because that's an Esper Sprite. This one actually can't be an item. Both this reward and the last reward in this area can only be a character or uh, an Esper. Um, so that's fortunate for us. So I'm going to heal back up and save. But we might be leaving because I don't know if I can take out uh, another boss. Uh, especially because we did not get really anything of value there. So that's cool. You learned. Okay, you did learn everything. Yeah. Um, not feeling particularly great about this. So... Depends on the boss. If it's a weaker boss, we might be able to do it. If it's a stronger one, we might be resetting and uh, trying to go somewhere else. So I'm going to do another monster in the box here to hope for something that maybe can give me a lot of experience or something. Um, this one, not really. In fact, I probably should just warp out of this fight, run away, because... Um, I'm, you can see I'm not doing too much damage here. Yeah, right now I'm not getting a lot of uh, offensive options in this seed. The seed's being a little stingy, unfortunately, outside of the Super Bowls. And the Super Bowls are expensive. Like, I, you know, I do not have the money to buy more of them. Um, and even if you did, you're buy, you're pay, paying money for a temporary thing instead of being, instead of paying money for like a good weapon or something that is not going to break. Um, so I'm hoping for some good magic. I'm hoping for a character with a good ability, maybe because um, I don't have a lot going for me at the moment. Um, sword tech's kind of the only uh, only thing, um, and sword tech doesn't really get good until the higher levels uh, either. So. Um, so we'll see here. This dungeon's a little long as well, um, which is why it's not very popular. Most people like skipping it. Um, but most of the checks I had were not very... Um, the most checks I had left were not very good either. So um, I could have made the argument of not doing this uh, potentially. Uh, we're going to take a safety save, though. I normally don't save here. Um... But, like I said, I don't know if I can beat this boss or not, so we'll do a safety save. It's obviously slow coming down to coming down here. So this next boss, after we beat him, we'll get the second check of this dungeon. It can only be an Esper or an item. Some checks can't be characters, and then sometimes you get checks that cannot be dead that can't have an item so that also factors in when i'm trying to figure out where to go because this one i know i'm guaranteed two things towards progress um as an example um but like i said i don't really have a lot going for me at the moment which makes this a little more difficult even like this boss actually isn't particularly hard but when you have very little offense it becomes a little uh a little scarier Oh, we do a fire on him because Mog has natural magic. So that actually, uh, he is weak to fire. Fire, of course, is not a strong spell compared to fire two or three, but beggars can't be choosers here, right? We're kind of working with what we have. Um, the reason I'm bringing up a menu like this is it's called the weight trick. So Final Fantasy obviously has... Um, has an ATB system that charges up uh, until you um, until it's your turn to go. And um, the way the ATB system works is I have a setting on called wait, that if you're in a menu, the ATB completely halts. This way, you don't have to feel rushed going through a menu. Um, we're going to go back and save again uh, because I'm taking this very casually and safe. Um, so we have it set the weight. So if we're in a menu, the ATB system will pause so that we're not rushed uh, going through a menu. 
Um, and that impacts our enemies, more importantly. So our enemies will um, also be paused when we are um, in a menu. So I did not check Alexander beforehand. That, that was dumb of me. Okay. So we, now we, we're starting to have some offense going on here. Um, of course, I should have checked this beforehand because I could have learned Bolt 2 at the end of that fight. Uh, that was a mistake on my end. So if the edit, if so, if all my people have full ATB ga gauges, then if I go in a menu, the enemy's ATB will pause. But and mine would too, except everyone's already queued up. Everyone has their ATB filled, so it doesn't hurt me at all. Um, we call that the wait trick. So you'll see me do that, especially if I'm doing attack with long animation. If everything's queued up on my end and long animation's happening during that time, my opponent, the enemy's. Um, ATV bar is charging, so I'll go in a menu to pause him and hopefully reduce how many attacks he does. Um, it's a small thing, and knowing when to do it uh, can be difficult. Um, it's definitely important later on when attack animations get pretty long on both your end and the opponent's end. So now we'll go, we'll get, do two more fixed encounters, and then we'll fight another boss, and that will be the end of this dungeon. Okay, I was like, I don't recognize this enemy. Um, a lot of times, you'll recognize the sprite of an enemy, and that'll kind of tell you um, some of its properties, maybe. This being a bird, I, I don't really recognize where the ga original game is from, but I know it's going to be pretty weak, so I wasn't too worried about it. And that's the nice thing about the undead enemies is they all look like demons or skeletons or something, so you know that they're, um, you know that they're probably um, probably pretty weak. All right, I want to finish this battle, even though I'm not doing too much damage because that might teach me bolt three and everything. Yes, Interceptor does a lot of damage when he procs. Uh, obviously, you can't control it, but he can do a good amount of counter damage. There we go. Okay, so now we actually have some offense going, uh, finally. So now I feel a lot more comfortable about, about stuff. I don't want to get this on you, actually. The problem with learning magic is you spend a lot of time in menus, so that's kind of a big uh, time waste. Oh, motherfucker. So this is, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the game. I, In fact, I don't know if we can beat him. It's That's how hard he is. I'm gonna be able to do. I'm not gonna be able to do enough damage with this, unfortunately. So the problem is he will uh, change his elemental weakness after he gets hit, and that means I. He's only weak to one thing now, and everything else he's immune to. And I have no idea what the, what the hell he's uh, weak to uh, right now. Um, and you can see he has a pretty high defense also. Um, I didn't know that would uh, do that. So, And he has a lot of HP, and he has very strong magic. So I don't think I have enough tools to be able to beat him. We're going to try. Uh, but he's one of the hardest bosses in the game. I absolutely hate running into him. Also, we can't spend too long because we have a little timer coming down as part of the story here. Yeah, this is going to be a reset. Um, and that's fine. Um, you know, we don't get the last check here. The, my worry is if it's a character, we might be what's called gated 
if every other check in the game doesn't lead to a character and that we had to beat this to get our next character, then um, then we're going to have to come back here and do this entire long-ass dungeon all over again. Um, and that would suck. So, But we just can't beat him. We don't really have an option. We kind of have to leave. So we're going to go do Shadow's last check. Um, this is a free check. It's a very easy free check. But I didn't do it earlier because I didn't want to do too many free checks at the beginning of the game. Um, which means this could bite me in the ass if it was something really good because that would have really impacted my time. Um, yeah, it was good. It was a character. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. That was a bad decision on my part. Um, I should have maybe at least checked it. Um, uh, but it is a character, and more importantly, it's a character who has uh, arguably the best checks in the game. Um, like I said, every character has different checks, different amount of checks. Poor Maul only has one check, as an example. Saban has five, and they're all mostly pretty quick, and um, all roughly within the same area. So, um, definitely... Um, definitely good to pick him up. I hope I've actually equipped stuff on him. Yeah, nothing really worth uh, putting on him at the moment. So we'll do this check first. This check is four fixed encounters, and that's it. Um, so that should hopefully have us learn our magic. You know, we learned our magic before, but we reset. So um, obviously that killed any progress we had uh, since we had learned it before we saved. And we get this fight again, which is fine. Sabin has slots, which is an okay ability early on, but it's not particularly great uh, late. Um, which is it, which is fine. Um, we want Odin on you, and Alexander on you, and then we'll get this on you. Okay. And by the way, you know, John and Ben, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to chime in. I hope I'm doing a good job explaining this. Uh, explaining this and everything. Yeah, you are. Thanks. It's uh, kind of funny. How, like, you seem to have had some pretty crummy luck today, but I think that's actually been helpful for, like, you can explain. Okay, so in this situation, this actually makes sense <laughs> because... <laughs> of just how weird this run has been. Yeah, well, my practices for GDQ have been so horrible that this run, surprisingly, is not too weird. <laughs> um, that's how that's how bad some of them were. So, like, as an example, there are 11 dead checks in the game, and earlier this week, I did a run where I got nine uh, dead checks, including my first five were dead checks, um, which meant that I went over 30 minutes without getting anything towards progress. Um, I was in my level 20s, and everyone else was level 3 in the game, like every enemy. Um, which is, which was crazy. It was the worst luck I've ever seen. Um, like, it comically bad. Like, I wasn't even angry. I was just, like, laughing how horrible this was. Um, so this would be character number 5. So then we just need one more character after this, which is pretty nifty. Um, and in particular, I'm very glad to see uh, Cyan for a particular reason I'll explain in a minute. Um, or I'll explain in about 10 minutes or so uh, why Cyan in particular is very good to see. Um, and it's not because he's he's probably going to be pretty worthless because Cyan has pretty horrible stats. We'll see what ability he has, but I probably will not be using him. Um, but you never know. These guys are a little bit tougher, I, th I think, if I remember them correctly. Oh, yeah, you're still alive, huh? 
Yeah, get him interceptor. Interceptor is technically a ground attack for some reason, so if an enemy's floating, it does not work on them, which is very odd. Uh oh. Mog is now confused, which means he might attack us, um, but it doesn't matter. We finish the fight anyway. All right, so now we'll look at Cyan and we'll see if we want to put him in our party or not. Um, ooh, that's tempting. Yes. Uh, he has natural jump. We've got... Normally I don't take this long to decide. Um, all right, we're gonna go risky and say yes. Um, so jump is a command that you jump up in the air and a turn later you come down and hit your enemy, which lets you be a little defensive because you get the you know, go high in the air um, and avoid attacks. Uh, you do 50% more damage, unless you have a spear in which you do twice as much damage. Uh, it is not guaranteed that Cyan can equip a spear. Um, the way it works with the rando is that every character can equip what he can equip in vanilla, and then there's a 30% chance for any, for a given item, whether a character could equip it. So. Mog and Edgar are the ones in the original game who equipped spears. So I know Mog could equip any spear or fine. With Cyan, for a given spear, there's only a 30% chance. I also don't have any spears either. Um, but if I find a spear, he can suddenly start doing a lot of damage because uh, he has because uh, he has jump. Um, it's a risk. I don't know, you know, uh, how it's going to play out, um, unfortunately. We'll, uh, we'll see. Saban wasn't that great anyway, so we might be pivoting it anyway to another uh, another character. I'm kind of taking my time. Normally, I'd be a lot faster and a lot sloppier if someone's equipping. Oh, Saban has that on him. Okay, I, I uh, Saban still has all his equipment on him, so I need to de-equip that from him real quick. Which I can just do by talking to this guy and ask him to unequip everyone who's not in my party. But obviously that is time consuming. But he had the Esper that had Cure too, which I would like more people to learn, so I kind of needed uh, to take that off him. So this is Cyan's first check. Cyan has really good checks. This check's great because it's just immediately a boss. You just can go fight the boss, and then if you die, um, you know, whatever, uh, you can just reset. Um, it's not a character. If it was a character, uh, you would, instead of Mog, it would be that character. Uh, so we know this is an item or an Esper. Another, like, peekable check, right? I could have, if I needed, if I didn't need a character and I saw a character, I could have gone the heck out. Um, this fight is a little sad because, uh, we're not going to get any, um, experience here. Um just how this fight mechanically works because you do enough damage Chupon shows up we don't need to kill Ultras we have to defeat Chupon um and uh yep I, we already beat him but he ends ends it with Sneeze because in the base game that's how he, you fight him on the airship and he sneezes you off the airship um but it means you don't get any experience or MP um so it kind of sucks seeing him because you're not going to get any levels uh, but we do get our six Magicite, so we need one more character and three more Espers in order to beat the game. Um, it's a shame I'm doing this one casually, because this actually has been one of the best paces I've had so far. Um, so, we're going to go do another Cyan dungeon. Um, mostly for safety reasons, I'm just going to pick up some sleeping bags. Um, uh for people who don't really play Final Fantasy, tents in Final Fantasy uh, always um, re uh, heal your entire party, HP and MP, um, but uh, you can only use it at save points. In this game, I think it's the only game it's in, there are also sleeping bags, which do the same thing, but they do it on individual uh, uh, party members. Um, it is There's a little animation when you use a tent, so it is faster to use sleeping bags in Worlds Collide than uh, tents. Uh, I'll use a tent in a pinch, but obviously you want to go, um, you want to go fast. So sleeping bags are 
uh, preferred. It also gives you some flexibility. There are occasionally times you don't want to heal people, and uh, uh, tents would heal everyone. And if you are in one of those times where you purposely don't want to heal someone, it can be a pain. So this is another multi-part check, like Shadow's uh, check. Um, there are three checks here and two bosses. One check has to be a character or an Esper, and we'll actually be able to peek that check. Um, it's the second check. So first we'll fight a boss here. Um, whoops. Go up this way. Wow. Okay, I'm not even thinking straight. I, I know I know where I'm going, and I am was not going that way for some reason. So we'll fight the first boss right here. Also, at this point, I'm starting to think about what I want to do endgame. Ooh, this is a vanilla boss. <laughs> You fight him. You fight uh, these guys here in Vanilla. Um, funny enough, uh, we got to kill the top one first because the top one will um, uh, will revive anyone else who uh, is alive. So we need to kill him first. Um, I unfortunately don't have any instant death. That would be really swell. Cyan's a little useless, unfortunately. Uh, we'll jump to get a little damage because the jump animation isn't long, but he, unfortunately, is rather useless. Do you know... You don't look here. Oh, actually, you do have Odin, though, so that's good. Uh, the guy in the back is uh, can be hit with instant death. This is not guaranteed hit, but... Um, but it works, so that's cool, because the guy in the back is, can absorb ice, so, um, oh, that's a shame. So, I didn't know how I was going to take him out, since ice is kind of our main damage dealer at the moment. Um, but he's, uh, he's suspected of instant death, so that's good. Um, that puts us at seven espers, so we need a character and two more espers. We'll see in a second what character we're getting in this check. Um, we're gonna do this check regardless, but if for some reason you were looking for a character and you saw an Esper here, um, you might like you might choose a reset out at this point. Um, but we don't really care either way. Um, we're doing this check regardless, so, um, but that's another example of, of peeking. So we do this puzzle real quick. It's obviously the same each time, so I, I know the solution. It's at this point just I'm not even thinking about it. It's just muscle memory. A lot of moving through the map is just muscle memory for runners because we've done it so many times. Um, we also are buffering our inputs. So, um, for instance, like during that part where he's flipping the switch, I can't move. I'm holding left because I know when I'll hold left. Uh, I know when I'll go left. And so, therefore, um, as soon as you gain control, the first room you gain, gain control, you, your input will go in. So... Like, I'm holding down right now because I know I'm going to go down as soon as I can control my character again. Um, and then I'm going to, once I transition to the screen, I want to go up. So during the screen transition, I'm just going to start holding up again. Um, that's just like a trick to go faster is knowing when the buffer input. Um, same thing with holding A. If you notice when I finish a fight and all the experience and what magic you learn flashes across the screen, the reason to go so quick is I'm holding A during that entire time. Um, and, uh, that buffers A and just almost, it's almost like a rapid fire. Um, so when you can, not everything can be buffered, but knowing what can and can't and knowing when in battle you should buffer A can really speed things up a lot. Um, uh, once I figured that out, my times were increasing by like five freaking minutes. It was crazy. Uh, Ragnarok doesn't really have too much. Who has strength plus two? You do. I'm regretting this Cyan pick, honestly. Um, but we'll see. Oh, right, you died, so, um, that's fine. Also, I'm a little worried because I have very little armor. I have not found any good armor um, for the most part. So that makes me a little uh, worried here. So we fight another boss, 
And this is a very hard boss. This is one of the hardest bosses in the game. So, um, rather unfortunate. Hopefully we can get through this quickly and without issue. Uh, but that might not be up to me. <laughs> and like I said, not a lot of armor. And you're starting to see why that matters. Because she's going to hit hard. And she's countering my attacks too. Um, countering them countering them very hard. Yeah, this is going to be uh, uh, this is going to be rough. I shouldn't have jumped to Cyan. I should have kept him around so he could be healing people. Uh, this will hit two people, and I'm checking to see who's going to hit. Um, oh, no, that one hits everyone. Okay, that's not cool. Uh, okay, so this kind of sucks because, one, I've already invested time in this check, and two, um, there's a good reward for, for finishing this dungeon that I want. Um, I really want. Um... But I don't know if I can beat her. We're gonna try again. I'm gonna keep sighing around for um, for healing and stuff. And for uh, weight tricking and see if that matters at all. So she says we're gonna weight trick with Shadow here. I was going to wait trick with Cyan, but um, the game had other ideas in mind. Okay. Unfortunately, I only get one turn of morph out of, out of this. I was hoping to get two, but Cyan gave put the sleep screw with my weight tricking with him. Because I was trying to get it so that during the animation, um, ATB pause so Shadow would stay in morph longer. Because he does 50% more damage uh, during morph. And she has a lot of HP. Thought you had more HP than that, Shadow. It's also going to depend how much she wants the counterattack too. Get you healed up. Oh wow! I'm surprised you guys survived that. All right, Cyan just probably woke up. And we're going to use Cyan to bring Celeste back to life, since he's basically going to be an item mule here. Oof. Where's my Phoenix sounds? There they are. Try and decide what I want to do. Um, I think we do this. Mog is already out of MP, so he's not going to be able to cast his uh, spells as much, so I wanted to. This is potentially problematic. So everyone now is cursed, so if they. They're going to get a counter above them, and when that gets hit zero, they're going to turn to the zombies. Uh, so we need to finish the battle before then. I'm just taking my time now in order to make sure I'm doing this as best I can. Because I'm doing so little damage, and she has a lot of HP, that I am worried that we're going to run out of time. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool.
That wasn't too, too bad, luckily. So we'll get an Esper for sure, and then we might get another Esper, which would put us at eight, I think. I'll have to double check that. But the important thing here is, if you do science check, you learn every sword tech, and Celeste has sword tech. Um, normally to learn every sword tech, you have to get your levels in the 70s, which is just not gonna happen in Worlds Clyde. So I really wanted to do this check early because now Celeste is gonna do a lot more damage because she has more, um, uh, she has more sword techs available to her. Unfortunately, it was not a, another Esper, so I think it puts us at seven here. Um, Eight. Okay, we do have eight Esper. So we need one character or one Esper left. Um, we have only a few checks left that could have a character in it. Um, so we're going to start going there first. We want to do checks that we know could have characters, because if it's an Esper, then uh, we get our last Esper as well. Um, ah, you can. Okay, so this is good. Um Cyan can equip Fixed Dice, which is going to do a random amount of damage, but if you jump, jump impacts it, so his random damage will be multiplied by 50%, which makes him a lot more consistent with his uh, his random damage, which is nice. Um, and this has a magic power plus one Esper, or uh, magic power plus one on this Esper, which means that he'll gain an extra magic every level up, and that's very good. We want that. Um, on him. Um, it won't be that much. It'd be nice if we got there earlier in the game so we could keep it on him when he's at lower levels. But, you know, for now, I think it's um, it's going to be completely serviceable. So, going to do this check. Sorry, I completely uh, got mixed up with another one. Zozo, the town, so nice, they named it twice. This is another free check. We don't have to fight a boss here, but there is an optional boss we are going to fight, uh, and I'll explain when we get there um, why that's the case. Uh, this check is another one of science checks. It's his last check. Um, so to recap, Doma Castle World of Balance was very quick. You just fight a boss. Doma Castle World of Ruin is three checks for two bosses, and it's a pretty fast check, um, and you get three checks out of it. One is guaranteed not to be dead. And then this check is free and it has some loot so you're actually they're literally almost all on the path you have to go you don't have to go all the way for these chests which means you can get a little bit of loot and it has a dragon um we're not getting the best loot in the world the earring's nice though so this has one of the eight dragons um Do I have an Atlas armlet on you? I have a hyper wrist. I don't really have anything else at the moment. So this is one of the eight dragons. Um, dragons are optional bosses. They give a lot of uh, experience. They give 50 MP, which is enough to learn any spell that's not times one. And then they um, also um, drop a random high tier item. So, all very good stuff. Um, they obviously take time because they're completely optional, but they can do a lot of damage. So that's the level 7 sword tech with uh, Celeste there. You can see that it did uh, about 4k damage. It ignores defense, so um, it's always going to do 4k, but it's only going to get stronger as she gets stronger. Um, he, I don't think he has too much HP left, uh, luckily. By the end of the game, I'm hoping she's going to do about 8k with it, um, which is why I wanted to get it. Um, there's other high-level sword techs that, I'll, that will come up, and I'll explain when they come up, that are also pretty good. So, going to gain much experience. Everyone should gain about two to three levels from that. And I got another fixed dice. I don't really need it, unfortunately. Um... Potentially, I don't think I'm going to be using it. So that kind of sucks, but we will sell it to get something. And then we have here a dead check. Um, so that kind of sucks. That's our third dead check of the game. 
Not what you want to see when you're trying to get your last character and your last Esper. Good question. Can I vanish Doom or Sketchbug like I did back in the uh, good old days? Not with this standard race flag set. In almost every flag set we turn it off. We do have an option to turn it on though. If you really want to, you can create a C where those are on. But we've turned off certain glitches like that. Um, other glitches like the slot manipulation glitch is turned off. Um, and uh, like uh, there's a whole list of glitches that are turned off in order to not be abused. Uh, we've also turned off stuff like undead flag on bosses. So if I run in the Phantom Train, uh, a lot of people might have uh, casually uh, kill a Phantom Train by using a Phoenix Down on it uh, when they played this as a kid. Um, that is not an option either. We have uh, turned that off um, as well. Uh, but you can still, still use them on normal enemies. So there are... Um, yeah, so we've done a few things to stop it from uh, from people to be able to cheese stuff. We've also added a few other um, quality of life improvements. Um, like the Chatterack boss fight is faster. Uh, Rexel, you don't have to do the stupid thing where you have to kill a party member and then revive them um, in order to make it so that uh, it's a little more speedrun friendly uh, within limits, of course. So I'm doing two checks here, mostly because these are both peekable. Um, but they are a little bit longer. Um, I'm doing Mog's only check, which is what I had to go in there and, and talk to that wolf in order to start the check. Um, uh, not worth it. Um, thought about it for a second. And then at the top, so we're going to follow this wolf all the way to the top of the mountain here. And... That will be Mog's check at the top, but there's also another check at the top that we call uh, Kefgat Narsh. Uh, by the way, that was another peak. Um, we saw Realm there, the top right corner. That is a peak for Yumaro's check uh, in World of Ruin. Um, if we, if there was no one there, it meant it would mean that Yumaro has a Magisite or an item, but it means that Realm is at the um, is at Yumaro's check. Um, we don't have your Maros, so it doesn't really matter at all, but it is kind of good to file that away in case, I, in case I got him later and needed a character for some reason. Um, so right here, we see this ghost. So that's the Kefka at Narsh check, which we'll potentially do in a second. It really depend on this check whether we decide to do it. And this is a character. So this is our last character. Uh, we got Locke here. And I'm actually not going to do Kefka at Narsh now that I got Locke. Um, because Locke has some checks that are a little bit quicker that we're going to do. You have a choice between whatever the check is and a high tier item uh, that Lone Wolf tells you. I could go talk to Lone Wolf and I could have got a Genji helmet. Um, and then I could have gotten Locke in uh, World of Ruin instead, but Genji helmet kind of sucks. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to do it, but this check here, there are certain... Certain checks, such as um, the Esper I bought for like 400 earlier is one of them. There are certain checks that are not tied to any character. Um, that they're always available. You can always come and do Kefgat Narsh here. Kefgat Narsh is special where it is the only check in the game that's always available that can be a character. Um, all the other ones, like buying from the Zen Thief, it can only be Espers or items. That This one can only be a character. Or it could be a char it could be an esper, but it's the only one that can be a character that's always available. It is slow. You, I can't warp out of here. I have to walk all the way back down. Um, I decided to do this check because since I'm going up there with Mog, it makes it a little more viable. Um, but you can tell that it is slow um, to walk all the way up and, wa and walk all the way back down. Uh, sadly enough, um, but do and then when you actually do the check, it requires you to go through a pretty slow mini game in order to fight a boss, which is why I'm choosing not to do it. Um, because I, I have a few other checks that are a little bit quicker available to me. Uh, which we're going to do one of them right now. Um, so people don't like doing Kefka Narsh because it is slow. Uh, sometimes we call it gating, like you're gated at Kefka Narsh if your fourth character is up there. Um, especially because a lot of people naturally don't go up and check that uh, at all. So... Um, 
Luckily, we kind of avoided it, but we did have to walk up there, so we only partially avoided it. So this check is interesting, where we're going to be given an option between an Esper and an item. Unfortunately, it's if you, whatever one you don't take will be available to you only if you have Terra, which we don't have. So I have to take the Esper, but that now gives us enough to go to Kefka. Um, but for GDQ, we have an incentive of people donating whether to save Sid or kill Sid. So while I go fight this dragon, if people want to chime in whether to save Sid or kill Sid, let me know, and then I will do whatever one uh, people uh, people want. Also, magic power plus one. Oh, I'm also going to go buy something uh, in World of Balance uh, first, actually, before we continue. So yeah, if anyone... Oh, one, one vote for uh, save Sid here. Okay. Remember the first time I played Final Fantasy VI, I did not realize you could save him, and it was a very sad day. <laughs> it's not clear how you can save him, and the game kind of rigs it against you to allow him to die, unfortunately. Um, so, with Worlds Collide, we added a um, what we call an objective system, where um, you can set certain conditions to get certain like rewards or, or other things, and... Um, one of the objectives that we uh, that we have is whether you uh, let Sid live or let Sid die. So to kind of like show that off at GDQ, we're gonna um, if you let Sid live, nothing happens. If you let him die, you actually get the most powerful sword in the game. Um, and uh, it's where you have to kind of decide between what is morally right and what you know, might give the player a reward, slash if you want to make the runner's lives a little bit more miserable by not giving that reward. Um, <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, um, it's a little fun, um, but, um, it, yeah, it's mostly to show off the, um, uh, it's mostly to show that, show that off. Damn it, I was hoping... So I was hoping that I have no body for you. That is a sad day. Let me tell you. There you go. Um, hoping that someone else besides Celeste could equip this um, Atma weapon. Actually, we're switching out party members again. <laughs> Since I can go slow and I don't really care. Um, who else can equip the Atma weapon? Lock can. Okay, that's who I thought. Alright. We're gonna switch out Cyan for Lock. Because Celeste is gonna do a lot of damage with Sword Tech, and I don't wanna cannibalize that, so we're going to. Um, I actually also might stop by a store and buy armor because I have some of the worst armor I've ever seen. I don't even have enough shields for everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so get back to what I was actually doing here. Do I have any HP plus espers? I have a strength plus, strength plus one. No, wait, um... Okay, so... Sorry, I was doing all that. Um, double Atma weapons are gonna do a decent amount of damage, but Celeste is also gonna do a lot of damage with her sword tech, and I this way, now we have two damage dealers instead of just one, is why I did all that. Fortunately, Lock is a little low level. Um, also, unfortunately, I forgot to put my Moogle Charm because I guess that was on Cyan. Uh, that's fine. Do you have... Does that bear have image on him? If so, I never knew that.
Anyways, so we have enough to go to Cafe Sour. I'm doing a dragon, though, in order to gain more experience, especially with Locke, since he is uh, lower on experience at the moment. Every time you do a relic, though, it re-optimizes re you, and it does not consider Atma Weapon to be the best weapon, because Atma Weapon does uh, more damage the closer you are to 100% HP. It's a formula, it ignores defense, it is a formula based off of your percentage of HP and your level. So the higher up we level up lock, the more damage he's going to do. But since it technically has a battle power of like 1, uh, the optimum function uh, does not equip it normally. You have to, I have to re-equip it. It's rather annoying. Alright, please be nice. Alright, so far you're nice. He can cast Pearl one to three times to start the battle. I'm hoping he doesn't cast it on lock, which so far is the case, and looks like he casts it twice. After he casts Pearl, he's like, not a problem. He'll cast the spell a lot, which is slow, but will literally do nothing. He, like, counters with the spell, and it's like, all right, cool, man, you're just wasting time, but sure, whatever. Cool. More importantly, that ex experience on lock is going to be good. You know what the sad thing is? Casually, this is not a horrible time. <laughs> Normally, I go into the tower around the minute mark uh, with the GDQ incentive, like, around a minute three or minute four. Um, so being at 116 and skipping out on full continent, casually playing around, this actually has not been a horrendous time uh, somehow. Um, all right, so we're going to save Sid. Uh, the trick to saving Sid is um, we need the fast fish or the medium fish on the left. Um, so there's our fast fish. we got to capture him, go up and talk to Sid, feed it to him, come back. Um, World's Clyde changed the formula so it doesn't take as long to do all this. Um, I found in my testing that... Uh, so Sid will... Get over here. Sir. Sir. I can only walk so deep in the water, so if he RNGs his way to the deep end, I gotta reload him. Um, the way it works is every second that goes by, Sid's health ticks down. So if you don't do anything, he'll die in two minutes. Um, but I found that because of how... If you feed him slow fish, he'll die even faster. Um, I have found, though, that if saving him is still faster, because it's so much easier to capture the fast fish, that um, it ends up, um, ends up being uh, faster to save him. So if I don't like what fish he has, I can go back inside and talk to him again. And if I do that, uh, it'll reset where the fish are. So, like, I don't particularly like that fish, so I'm going to talk to him again. And now the fish have reset. And so I'm just doing this until I find our no fish at time. Dang, that's unlucky. This is a little, little unlucky. I normally get a little bit better when it comes to his RNG. Come on, give me some fish, man. I did save beforehand in case I get screwed out of this. Um, those are slow fish, so... Unfortunately, I think any health increase I got by giving him the fast fish might have been borked by all that slowness that just happened. Sir, there we go. And there you go. Now he's, now he's saved. So... Casually, if you're doing it, if you don't see fast fish... I, so, so as a kid, I didn't realize that if you don't see fast fish, to go talk to him again, and it'll reload everything. That was the thing I did not know as a kid um, that I wish I knew. Um, and that's kind of the big trick. So now we get to do the final dungeon. Um, and the way that's going to work is... Um, Yeah, we'll do, do that. So we have to split our party into three parties. The rightmost one's going to fight three bosses, and then th these two are going to fight one boss each. Um, and it's going to kind of suck, because 
uh, fighting a boss with one character could potentially be problematic. Um, so we're going to hope we have enough tools available to us to be able to do this. Um, and hope we get lucky. We've luckily seen a lot of the worst bosses. Not all of them, but we've seen some of the worst bosses already. So hopefully that means that the bosses in here, especially for parties one and two, are not horrible. Um, but real quick, I kind of have to pee, so I'm going to take two minutes and go do that since it seems like a pretty decent stopping point, and then I'll be back in uh, two or three minutes. I am back. I'll edit this part out in post. <laughs> All right. So we started with three Moogle charms because. Um, oh, sorry. One second. Fuck up my headphones again. Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, so we we start World's Cloud with three Moogle charms for basically this purpose, so that. Each party here can go through this area without a uh, random encounter. So I went through a Moogle Charm on Sabin since he is a character I don't really care about um, in order not to take a relic slot away from Mog here. Um, one thing that... Oh, I didn't grab any more armor uh, for, <laughs> for my characters. Uh, I meant to go buy some. Well, that'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, that might make the final battle significantly more uh, harder. Uh, my levels are pretty low, so this actually might have been a bad idea on my part. We'll see. Okay. Um, I was going to say, so... Uh, one thing I didn't talk about because it didn't really come up is... We have an optional, what we call the skip, which we needed six characters and nine espers to go to Kefka. But if we got nine characters or we got 12 espers, basically if we got more of one than the other, we had the, we would have the option to skip the first part of Kefka's Tower and just go to the second part. 
it's built in as like a catch-up mechanic if like you're getting unlucky and you can oversaturate with one or the other it's supposed to um it's supposed to help you catch up this is one of the bosses that i was afraid of um was uh doom gaze here um he's one of the nasty bosses that's still left that i was kind of afraid we might see um and uh hopefully like we, we ran into with our um our main party or else this could get a little uh sad yeah, he'll lock up whirlwind there if it hits you does 90 uh percent of your hp and damage so everyone's a little a little sad at the moment And unfortunately, he has a lot of multi-hit attacks, and he can kind of get into a cascade here. Um, Whirlwind also does a percentage of your HP. Um, so you can see he's a little a little mean. Um, he's being particularly mean here. Um, luckily, that miss, that would have been an instant kill. Let's see if I can get her back up. I should have waited a second, actually. I should have waited till he did an attack, because he's just going to use a multi-hit attack. Yep. Uh, we'll charge this up to seven. Oh, I should have done five, actually. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm actually going to leave after this and go buy more armor because I'm actually worried. Um, and you're kind of seeing how long this fight's taking. Um, because he is being a little bit of a jerk. Alright. So we're actually going to do... F well, I would love to do five if you stop fucking casting Doom. Thank you very much. Because I'm getting a little sick having to revive her. Yeah, thank you. I, you're making it very clear you're a fucking jerk. It's very obvious. Alright, let's heal you up first. This attack steals HP and MP from... Uh, your opponent and uh, equal to whatever you need, whatever the difference is. So that's what I was trying to cast the first few times when he decided to do me instead um, because that will fully heal her without wasting an X potion like I was doing. Alright, I get it. Okay, Lox is not going to live. That's very obvious apparently. My bad. Okay. Yeah, we're warping out. I'm going to go get some more levels, I think. Um, because this is, unfortunately, not going particularly well. And also, I actually just straight up need more Phoenix Sounds now. Now that I wasted so many on that fight, so I should probably go shopping. And not getting those levels on lock is rather unfortunate. We are just going to go... There's a dragon right here. We're going to fight. Hopefully get some more levels on him. So normally it goes a bit better than this. Part of the reason it's going so bad is the game did not really give a lot of... Um, game is being a jerk now it actually was not a jerk for most of the game but now these bosses have been kind of a jerk um celeste got frozen there and when you're frozen you literally are stuck there for two minutes um unless someone uses fire magic on you but i don't have any fire magic so it is just easier to reset and try that again than it is to have um lock uh do that holy shit that is 
amazing that I just randomly picked that up. Okay, so that is the offering. The offering does um, um, it, it lets you attack four times for um, but you do half damage on each attack. Um, it is pretty good though with Atmo weapon uh, in particular and a few other weapons because of how their um, damage formula works. Yes, thank you. You know, it's great. You know, uh, you can freeze her each time. That's uh, that's something. As you can see, now I'm doing 8K instead of, um, you know, whatever it was before, uh, 3K or whatever. Um, unfortunately, the attacks are random, so not as useful if you're against... Um, a multi-hit boss, which will come up in the final fight, but single targets like this, it, you can see right there, it absolutely shredded him. Alright, so we're actually going to warp out. I'm going to buy some armor in Phoenix Downs. Um, like I said, I'm playing this... Uh, very safe uh, here. Oh, that, I don't want to go there. That's going to give me a, uh, since I have saved it, if I went to that town, it actually would trigger a check, and I don't want to do that, so we're going to skip out on that one. Uh, no Phoenix Sound, it's funny enough. Phoenix Downs are in most item shops, but not guaranteed. Uh, there's nothing guaranteed in any item shop. Nothing crazy there. Yes, Valiant Knife. Uh, Valiant Knife is a great weapon. It's the opposite of Atma weapon. It does more damage the lower in HP you are. Um, with, um, with, uh, what's it called? Um, Oh, I didn't realize I picked up Pearl Ants. Um, with uh, the offering, you could do a lot of damage with um, with the uh, with um, the Valiant Knife. However, um, I'm not going to bother because I, I have the double Atma weapon with the Genji Glove. If I had a second Valiant Knife, it would be a lot more useful. Uh, but we do not, and that's fine. Um... But otherwise, yes, I would just do that. We also... No earrings. So you want to go look for Phoenix Downs, and then we'll go back in. Um, back into the tower. Normally I would not warp out. I would just fight through the tower, and if you wipe, you wipe. But I do want to show off the entire game. Um... So I am going to play it safe here and, and warp out. Honestly, it's still going faster than I thought we would. All right, let's check here real quick. Oh. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's our sleeping bags. I, bought, I did not need to buy that many. <laughs> My bad. We'll pick up a few more. See more people taking dragons in KT versus using the whole party outside KT. Um, so I always, I almost always fight the dragon on path three because I have two characters. Uh, I'll only fight the dragon on path two if I um, if I have a really strong character there. I'm going to do it this time only because I worked out. I'm going to put lock on that party and only lock and I'm going to use him to fight that dragon. Um, uh, is kind of what my current plan here is. Um, it really depends on wh what my levels are at. My levels were very low here. These were very low levels. I'm, I mean, I have fought two dragon, well, three dragons, you include the one in KT and you're seeing that my levels are, um, 
um, are only 33, and that's with three dragon fights. Just, I, I had some, um, I had some encounters that were just not very, uh, productive, unfortunately, um, like fixed encounters, and so, um, Celeste is per in a pretty good spot, but everyone else is not, uh, particularly great. So, and like I said, I'm doing this more as a demo of what is Rolls Clyde with talking a bit about speedrunning strats, but I, this isn't a speedrun of it per se, despite the timer, um, being below. Um, I am playing this as casually as I can play this, uh, I guess I should say. Um, it's hard for me to play completely casually, um, because I'm gonna do optimal stuff, but I would not be fighting this dragon, uh, in a normal race. It, this would be way too slow and completely unnecessary to come up here and uh, do this real quick. Um, though, fighting the Ice Dragon actually is not terribly... Um, does not take terribly long to come up here and fight this dragon. But yeah, to answer your question, I like fighting the third dragon in KT. I, and I'll normally do Opera House Dragon um, if I feel like I need any levels at all or I'm kind of hoping for, I don't know, a good piece of armor or something. Um, I'll, do, I'll do that as well. Hopefully this will finish him off. Yeah, you're seeing she's doing now about 6k per hit. Which is also pretty decent. I would love an Atlas armlet actually on him. All right, that's good. That's some good defense there. That um, that extra ice ice shield. All right, so now we'll go back in. We're gonna restructure our party a bit since we fought a boss and a dragon with the rightmost one. I'm gonna decide that. Celeste on her own can handle that. Um, so we're going to put Locke in party two along with Shadow. Mog will still be back over here, but then Celeste will come over here um, and hopefully be able to solo the two bosses there is kind of my plan. Because worst case, if uh, um, I can always switch equipment around, so she can also equip both at my weapons. So worst case, I can put both of them on her as well and have her kind of uh, use that and then put them back on lock before the final battle. Now is the time we... No, wait. I got to keep the the hero ring on you. I was going to say I want to put the hero ring on lock, but um, I need both relic slots to do the eight times damage. We'll see if I do eight times damage come KT, come the final boss, because the final boss has a lot of multi-hit attacks. I know a lot of people don't like using offering there anymore because it ends up being too unreliable. I find that it's still pretty good because if you have instant death, you're going to reduce the number of targets anyway, which makes it a lot more viable. Alright, so we're actually going to switch parties here so I can um, I guess it doesn't really matter what the hell I, I do here. Um, we'll put Hyper Wrist, even though I don't know if that actually impacts uh, Sword Tech 7 or not, but um, we'll say we'll put, put him there, but not fight the dragon until I can save just so we uh, don't risk a wipe for some reason. But we should be fine. And we're going to use a little glitch called the save point glitch. Where if someone's on a save point and you haven't moved with your other character, you can uh, still do all this. You can still save and use sleeping bags. Makes it a little bit easier to, to heal on the final, the final tower if you uh, play it right. Well, that's a mean start. I'm going to see how much it does. Um, he doesn't always do that. It's actually kind of rare him starting with Quake. Um, Quake does a lot of damage. Um, it does it to both sides, but he absorbs Earth-based attacks, so it just heals him. Um, 
But that was rather unlucky because that's just a lot of damage at once. I should have wait trick there. Since everyone's queued up, if I had just stayed in a menu, his ATB wouldn't have gone up. Because he's going to attack right after this, most likely, if he uh, survives. Which is not guaranteed. Yep, he's, he did survive. But he should hopefully die after Locke's next hit, if not earlier. Yeah, he is now, he's dead now. Yeah, so now he's actually doing more than max damage. Like, max damage on an attack is 9999, but if you have a multi-hit attack like this, you can break that. So he's doing about 12k swinging all those uh, Atma weapons now, uh, which is pretty crazy. And he picked up Genji armor, which is a very good piece of uh, armor. Um, it blocks a lot of physical attacks uh, very well. And um, physical attacks, uh, the first part of the final boss does a lot of physical attacks. And that's what I was mostly worried about with my armor, was getting by that. Because he, my armor was so bad, he might have been able to one-shot my party. Um, and that would have been... Uh, sad uh, <laughs> overall if, if that had happened. So um, glad that we were able to kind of deal with that. And now we'll move the last party up here. So you can see why the skip kind of matters because this is a lot of slow non-action walking through this. And I'll kind of show in a minute where we would have come down if we had the skip. Um, I find that with the skip, it's not worth shooting for, that the time save is not worth doing three checks, and it's questionable whether it's worth doing two checks. If you definitely, let's say you have eight characters when you get your ninth Esper, it might be worth shooting for that last character at that point, but um, uh, in order to save time. But I think if you need to shoot for more than one character, Esper, it's normally not worth the time save uh, to do the skip. Oops. Well, that was weird. It did not take my A input there. And, like, obviously, this part is, like, one of the few times that is completely just muscle memory mechanical like you know the, nothing's changing here until we fight a boss uh so it's kind of boring i sometimes check my phone during it because it's just the same movement so right here this is where you, you would be if you skipped you would have end up in this position all three party members on these switches so we would have skipped everything we had just done but also skip both dragons so if you do the skip you can't fight the dragons also if you do the skip you can't um uh, what's it called? Alright, this should be a non-factor. Um, if you do the skip, you also can't, um... Uh... You can only do the skip once. Um, so if you have to warp out, if you do the skip and you can't beat the the boss, uh, one of the bosses, and you warp out, then you have to go do the tower normally. Didn't used to be the case, but, um, but it is now. Um, it used to be able, you could warp in and out as much as possible, so some people would put their entire party, go fight a boss, come back, do another party, um, and it was, uh, rather quick, and that was decided that it was too cheesy to do that. Might have been quicker if I cast A3 there. Oh, goodbye, Sabin. Unfortunately, I think it's going to nullify. Yeah. She has an ice shield on, which nullifies fire attacks. And he's all about fire attacks. He also can only be hurt by ice if you're using elemental attacks. He's one of those bosses, so if you are relying on just elemental attacks and don't have ice, uh, he can be a little challenging. But obviously a non-factor. We got through him perfectly fine. 
So one more boss, boss in this path, and then each other pass, path will also have a boss. Ooh, that's good. That's our, we jokingly call that our validation chest, since that's a thing in, um, in uh, Link to the Past, uh, the, the last chest of the game in order to, quote, validate the seed, since everyone should have the same item there. Um, this fight's a little, um, uh, a little bit of bad luck. I can't use Sortex 7, really, because Sortex 7 hits random uh, enemies, and those front two will just revive if they die. You can't kill them permanently. Um, he's weak to uh, ice, but as you're kind of seeing, I'm not, still not doing a lot of damage, because uh, he has extremely high magic defense. Um, unfortunately, I don't have too many better options than this. Um... I can try Sortec 6 here, uh, which also does a lot of damage, and it does less than ice, so it's like not worth really using, right? Um, I'm going to wait one second. I actually want to bait out an attack if I can. And he heard me, so that's why he's not doing it. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to bait an attack at. Really? O okay. I was trying to bait an attack so I could use Empower to heal more. There you go. That's what I wanted. Because I knew she would survive. I feel like watching your opponent's Twitch stream is a write-up, even for an AI. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like uh, watching your opponent's Twitch stream requires a write-up, even for an AI. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... Definitely, in a race, you're not supposed to do that. Um, like, if it's head-to-head, -head, it's a little hard to watch your opponent's uh, screen. Um, but uh, that's a problem for... We have a lot of async races that we do where you can kind of play the seed whenever is convenient to you. Um, you know, because people have different schedules. And that's been a big thing of how do you avoid watching a stream or something. Um as far as I know, we haven't had any real, like, cases of cheating, though. That's good. Have you seen a boss, like, hang out like that for that long before? Like, I can't remember it ever taking that long playing the vanilla game. Uh, I have not, but it very well could be that he just, like... Ooh, good. Um, it very well could be that he just has uh, a very slow ATB bar or something. Um, sometimes they can, some bosses have part of their battle script that literally says do nothing, that there's like a percent of chance they do nothing come their turn, and maybe he has that, like, I don't have most of the battle scripts memorized, like, to that detail, so I could look it up, but he might have a do nothing, uh, part of his script. Oh man, this is such a big time loss, too. Um, this can come up with, um, with KT, that even if you have a good... Uh, character or a good party because you're not operating at full strength you can get in the cases where um, a boss isn't hard it just takes a long time um, and this is one of them because I just you know it's one thing I like about the game is that there's no silver bullet there's no uh, there's no attack or weapon that will always in every situation be the best uh, the best thing possible um what I probably should have done in hindsight was I actually should have reset. Um, I should have reset. I should have taken the Genji Glove and Atma Weapon off lock and put it on her. Because then I could attack with those and do more targeted damage. Um, a lot of runners, and obviously I'm doing this too, um, a lot of runners are not very good at knowing when the reset, when the when the fold them and come back. Um and they kind of stick with it. And this is a case where, now I think about it more, I should have um, I should have bailed out and changed up my setup. Um, in fact, I still might do that in a, in a little bit. Because I should have recognized that 1,500 with uh, the levels that they're at right now is just too much. There you go. Because I think that was like, 
a five minute time like it took like five minutes to fight that boss which is utterly absurd so like that was b bad decision making on on my part hey there sorry i couldn't miss the beginning of this oh no worries man welcome hey, yeah hey ben hope you're feeling okay Thanks, dude. All right. We got here kind of near the end, uh, which is uh, which is fortunate. We've been kind of just casually doing it. Um, I've been kind of doing some safety stuff to make sure I can actually complete this thing. Ooh, um, I don't want you to have uh, Jinji armor, though. So, yeah. Um, unfortunately, you, I think you missed a lot of kind of the the explanation but you know feel free to answer any questions oh man you know there weren't a lot of crappy bosses left and yet we've got in almost all of them in kt here in, in, in the tower um for real there were not that many mean bosses left um i think mog though should be able to handle this fine let's see here um we're gonna need to use an ether though, I think, on him to do it. If Cyan survives this, he might not survive. Oh, well, if you only hit one person. All right, so 99, yeah, this should be enough. Assuming Mog survives. Uh, so Quick lets you do two attacks in a row where everyone else is frozen. So we're going to do that real quick. Uh, it's kind of slow, but this way we can avoid some uh, counterattack damage from him uh, by doing it like this. Quick cost at 99 MP, though, which is why I, I kind of did that. And this isn't good. Yep, yeah, that's a wipe. So this is one of the last boss in the game in vanilla. Um, so he is rather difficult. Um, unfortunately, we've gotten bad luck. With the exception of one boss, we have now fought every endgame boss, um, or at least run into him since we didn't actually fight Magic Master, um, which is unfortunate. But um, we'll learn from our mistakes. So the nice thing about being in KT here when you can't use your entire party is you can move equipment around. Um, so we're going to put Ice Shield on him now. Ice Shield will nullify all that fire damage, um, and that should make the fight now significantly easier to be able to. Um, he still has other nasty stuff he could do. Uh, he has some instant death attacks uh, as well. And so if you let Cyan die, and then he's instant death, we're going to lose anyway. But um, the Ice Shield should make this a lot, a lot easier. Did I sell the fixed dice? I did. That's fine. So I'm doing about 5k a hit, but I would guess that he is probably around 30 to 35,000 HP. So this is still going to take a little bit to, to kill him. Oh, you're right, Mo, Mo Raid. I did put it put on Shadow. I had two fixed dice, and I sold one of them, which is why I couldn't remember if I sold both of them or not for um, uh, for the two ammo weapons. So luckily Maul can't be hurt by a good amount of his attacks. Um, we're just going to hope he doesn't do any instant death attacks uh, is basically it. But I don't think he has too much more HP left. And we're going to jump with Cyan in order to get him to live. In case Mog does get instant death. But hoping that this is the last one. Except that I now have no elixirs either. So this is not good.
So we're going to hope that he doesn't do exactly that. Motherfucker. So we got a little unlucky there. I, I, if the RNG had gone differently, we would have won. If he had done like a flare star there, it would have been fine. Um, hitting the super psychonic attack, it was unfortunate because that does like 90% of your HP. Like, it can't kill you. It always does 90% of your current HP uh, if it hits. Um, and uh, it did, and that's unfortunate. I probably should have taken those fixed dice off him. I'm trying to see if I have anything else that's helpful, but I do not. And if I wipe here, I have a few other tricks I can try to pull off the the make the the hopefully have more safety the next time around. Yep, and that was the other thing I was worried about. He could just cast stop on you, and then you are stuck there for like another minute or two until stop wears off. Um, I'm a little annoyed that we have basically fought every hard boss in the game. You normally don't fight this many of them. Um, that is uh, rather annoying. And, like, we would have been a lot better off if we had, um, say, put uh, Shadow in that, in that party or something. Or if Locke was on that, that side, the fight would be a lot different. So that is unfortunate. But... We're going to fight this boss first because it'll be easier, but I have a plan to maybe irk some more damage out of him. Oh, you have, like, nothing. I should probably have healed first. I didn't realize uh, he had, like, no MP there. And also don't have like a lot of healing either on people. So this might make the final boss a little a little sadder. Alright, so this should kill his first form. He dies and he comes back as a zombie. Which can be instant death, but I don't have any instant death um, on me, unfortunately. And We'll try to earn some damage at with Shadow here. Uh, it's going to be an okay amount, I guess. And, but it'll probably take another round of lock attacking the, the beat up. Nope, actually only one. Okay, that was quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that fixed dice and we're going to take the offering we're going to put them on Cyan because I know that he can equip the fixed dice. And we're going to take the offering off him. And by doing that, we can have, um, we can have Cyan um, be attacking uh, four times per, uh, per attack. So let's try that. Can you equip? I, I guess I don't want. Uh, you need the mobile charm on you. So this should maybe, it'll be slower, but this should maybe give us a little bit more offense to hopefully get lucky and kill him faster. Because we got bad RNG with what attacks he was doing, but obviously the less attacks he does, the less likely you'll be screwed by RNG. So we want to be able to attack him as quickly, do as much damage as possible. It gets back to what I said before, that the best defense in this game is a good offense. The faster you kill someone, the less likely they can kill you.
not rolling great, unfortunately. The fixed dice do does damage based off of uh, your level times each dice face, and then I think it does. And then I think that's only Mog is going to hit there. Yeah. Um, and then if you roll triples, it'll then multiply it again by the number on the triple. So um, if you like roll triple fives, it'd be his level times five times five times five times another five. Um, so potentially can do a lot of damage. You know, you saw some pretty good amount there, though. That is going to probably kill Cyan. Oh, it did not. This is, like, while frustrating, one of the cool things about Kefka Sour, and something I, like, was not really thinking about, um, which is why I, I kind of threw myself at him a little bit there, but... If you run to a hard boss, knowing what equipment people have and knowing how to move it around could save you. In this case, you saw that I've done a pretty significant amount of damage with uh, Cyan there, and that was obviously the big difference maker. I should have done that early, just like I should have with that Rexel battle. I should have had Celeste... Um, um, I should have reset out and re-equipped Celeste with the Genji... Uh, or the Atma Weapon Genji Glove offering combo. Um... One of those things where recognizing when you need to change up your strategy based off some bosses, because each boss is a little bit different, is uh, pretty important, I would say. Can you equip either of these? No, you cannot. Okay. Empty. And remove. And then what can you equip? You can get a... Uh, behemoth suit, so that's good. And then throw a Magus head on you, and ice shield. So our um, our equipment's a lot better than it was earlier. We found some good good stuff. Um, I probably didn't have to go buy that armor, but again, keeping everything uh, safe. I wish you want a green beret on you. Yes, we do. And then, same thing over here. I wish, um, yeah, we'll do Mirage Vest. All right, so we're gonna go fight the final boss. Um, the way the final boss works is you have to uh, yeah, it's probably the best. Um, oh, uh, helps. I think it's the only one that matters. Um, uh, unicorn matters too. So the final boss is four phases, and it's gonna start with. Um, we're gonna start with four characters, and the goal is we don't want, we want to make sure no character dies. If a character dies, well, we want to make sure no one's dead when we kill a phase. If a if a character's dead we move on to another phase, they're gone forever and they get replaced with the next character on the list. Um, obviously, we've only been playing with four characters, so if it gets replaced, basically, it's almost like... You know, the, the new character added is going to be of little value, unfortunately. The first phase is going to be a lot of physical attacks. There's going to be three parts. Uh, one of them can be killed by instant death. Um... And Celeste has an instant death attack that always hits, so she will instantly take out one of the three parts, which will be very, very beneficial. Um, though I just realized I set her up slightly wrong. It's going to make phase two a little more difficult, but probably not a big deal. Um, so we select our order here. Um, and then we start. So... Phase one is mostly a lot of heavy physical attacks, which makes me a little nervous. Um, some people have good armor, some don't. So we'll kind of see how, how this goes. But that should kill um, what we call long arm, um, which is the his right arm. Uh, we call him long arm because obviously it is the longer of the two arms. So then there's face and short arm. Um, And 
that is that was risky of me, and Locke decided to be a big jerk there. Um, so we have to kill Face first. Um, okay, well, I can't do that anymore. Um, if we kill Short Arm first, and Face is the last one to die, Face will counter with. Um, um, Face will counter with Quake, which will probably wipe our team. So we want to make sure Face dies first. Uh, since Locke and Celeste's attacks are basically random, that was very risky of me to... Uh, that was very risky of me to attempt to uh, do random attacks um, because most of them landed on uh, Short Arm, which we, want to, we wanted to die last. But we recovered. Um... And we're now done with phase uh, one. So phase two has four parts. One of them can be muted, which Celeste will do, uh, which will basically make it so it can't do anything. And then one of them could be instant death, which Celeste will also do, which was the mistake I did. I could have put the mute thing on someone else. Instead, we got to wait a whole extra turn to kill the second one. And that will knock it, us down to two of the four parts, which is good because this, this form has a lot of nasty stuff it can do. It can be uh, it can be rather gross with uh, some of its crap. Um, so we're gonna um, so Celeste is gonna cast mute via the si siren esper, and that'll put the guy in the far back uh, muted, so his attacks don't do anything, uh, leaving us with three um, tiger hit and tools. Tools will be instant death on Celeste's next turn. And of these two, uh, Tiger is easily the strongest. Um, luckily, he is weak from ice, and you're seeing how much ice damage uh, Shadow and uh, Mog are currently doing. Um, which is very great, because he will probably die with this next ice we have uh, from Shadow. And then Celeste is going to use Cleave that will kill Tools, leaving us just with Hit and Magic. Hit of which, uh, which magic, uh, magic is muted, so magic basically is doing nothing. Um, so th there goes tools. Yeah. So double down on asking a question: Are all the bosses randomized? Um, so every boss except for this one. This boss is not randomized. Uh, there's a mechanical reason why that I can tell you. I can tell you if you really care of why this boss in particular is uh, is immune from the randomization. Um, but the it ends up working very well with Worlds Clyde because it means that we always know what we're getting into. In fact, this boss isn't scaled either. This boss, no matter how much or little scaling is gone, like due to your progress, this boss is never scaled. Um, uh, he's always exactly the same. Um, uh, is that going to kill hit? Uh, okay, there it is. I was waiting a second because I wanted to make sure I could uh, heal. When hit dies, he does his attack all 10 hits, uh, which does 10 random um, uh, physical attacks. So I wanted to make sure that um, I healed up in case he uh, did some mean stuff with it. Uh, but yeah, so every other boss in the game is randomized except for this one. Uh, this one's always exactly the same. Um, which is nice, because it means we know what we have to do. We know what equipment or what items we need in order to uh, beat this boss, uh, since it's always exactly the same. Uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's why, like, I, I mentioned instant death and I mentioned mute, uh, like, be able to mute. I was noting that as we were playing that those were things that I needed to make this better. Um, the big problem we're going to run into is the next phase because there is a move that... Um, okay, he's magic stead now. Magic will only do an attack if he's muted when his HP is uh, done. Um, so... The next phase, when we kill him, he's going to do an attack called Calmness. And Calmness is going 
to be an instant death attack. He could potentially do it twice, um, and he all he does it when he dies. So you can't revive someone afterwards, um, and it's a pain. It means that if it succeeds, you're going to be down one person, one random person, come Kefka, Kefka, uh, the final fight against Kefka. For instance, Locke is doing the most damage. If Locke is calmness, it's going to be a lot rough. It's going to be pretty rough for us. There are ways to block calmness and to avoid it. Um, I have none of them. I actually, well, Shadow has a way, but no one else has a way to block calmness. Um, there are a few different ways, but they're not guaranteed that you'll find them. And unfortunately, I got unlucky and didn't find any of them uh, this seed. So the end of the next fight is going to be a gamble for us. Um, we could get really screwed over. If he decides to double calmness, uh, we might not be able to beat Final Kefka. If he calmnesses Shadow uh, would be the best case, then we're perfectly good. Or, you know, if we avoid it, uh, which you can naturally dodge it. Um, so it was a little scary. Uh, we had answers for a lot, you know, when you're playing, you, you're looking for instant death, mute, and calmness protection. Things to let you avoid calmness in order to make this fight easier. Um, and uh, we got two of the three, but we didn't get the important one. The calmness protection is the most important defensive thing you could have for this boss, and we did not get anything to let us avoid it. So uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Hopefully it goes okay. Um, so we have to kill the woman first. Uh the woman has, uh, whoops, uh, that was the wrong one on my part. Um, the, if the, uh, the, if we don't kill the woman first, the woman will revive, um, uh, revive the other guy. Um, she also can absorb every single, uh, element in the game, but she only has 10,000 HP. So, um, that's why I'm not using ice on her right now. It kind of sucks because um, uh, it is a little random with Locke's attacks here. Uh, but however, I think she's dead now. Uh, I think we've done. If I'm kind of, if I did my math right, I think we've done enough damage. Um, which means now everything is just hitting. Um, hitting sleep here as I try to play a little triage to make sure people aren't dying. Uh oh. This ain't good. Yep. Alright, so now we're in a little bit of a pickle. So he has 40,000 HP. There he is. Could you stop please? He has 40,000 HP, but when he gets within 10,000 10, HP left, he starts um, doing medios, uh, and he can do them multiple times in a row, which means that he can do quite a large amount of damage. Um, and he's still within 10,000 HP, okay. Um, so, I'm doing a little trick here where I'm using Revifies on him to heal him, to get him above that 10,000 HP threshold. And so with him above that threshold, his attacks are a lot better when he has more than 10,000 HP. Um, they, uh, I mean, I, I still might die, but he, uh, they're not constant Meteos. Uh, Meteo does a lot of non-elemental defense ignoring damage. Um, and uh, now he has more HP, uh, he has over 10,000. Um, uh, and so now I'm just trying to revive everyone back up. And then once everyone's revived, I'll just have Locke attack. And Locke's attack should do enough to kill him, uh, I would imagine. Um, but it's a matter of giving everyone uh, back up and healed. The life two should bring him back up the almost full HP, everyone. So we don't have to worry about the healing part. What's the typical time for a seed? Uh, obviously, that depends on your experience as a runner. Um, for me, I average around an hour 30, I would say, for this kind of seed. Um, 
obviously different people are uh, are different. Um, some of our best runners could do a seed like this in maybe an hour and 20 minutes, I would say, on average. All right, so that was exactly what we wanted um, outside of a natural dodge. Uh, we wanted, if it was going to hit anyone, Shadow was the person I wanted to, wanted to be hit. Um, especially because Mog and Shadow are very magic dependent, and I don't have a lot of ways of heal, of restoring MP at the moment, and so I wasn't going to bother restoring Shadow's MP. Um, so that was what we that was what we wanted. But yeah, I would say I my practice teacher GDQ have been between 125 and 135, around a 130 average. I'm hoping to get that down a little bit. Um, but, you know, some of our best runners will probably do the same seeds I do with about 120 or so, like the top tier runners. Um, nope, I want lock first, and then we'll charge Celeste. So he has about 64,000 HP. He's going to get scary when he gets to uh, under 32,000. Um, but the first half of it, he's not going to be too, too bad uh, overall. Um, like, I'm not going to be too worried about him until... Until we get um, past this first phase here. And we're going to have Celeste heal herself back up via her um, sword tech. So he always starts with... The motherfucker, fuck you. That was unlucky. I'd rather have hit uh, Cyan or Mog there. So um, he always starts with Fallen 1, which brings everyone to 1 HP. So I knew I had a heal back up from that. And now he's under 32,000. Uh, he starts this, uh, we call it the Goner Charge. Um, and uh, during this time, he does not counterattack at all. But after, after this, he will... Damn it. Uh, so I'm going to get that attack off before Goner. After this, if we hit him, there's a 33% chance that he will counterattack. Um... Which I was trying to avoid because, um, so I was trying to get that attack in beforehand because now he's going to counter lock, uh, potentially counter lock, and he could counter with some mean stuff, and we're hoping he doesn't counter. He did not, so that's good. And I don't really have a lot of uh, healing items at the moment that could potentially heal us back up, so like... Celeste can't do much outside of uh, casting in power, which we're going to do. Oh, no, wait, I do not want to do. Oh, who has... Alright, so this actually is one of the few times Unicorn is helpful. Train um, blinds and mutes everyone, so their physical attacks will miss, and they can't cast magic. Um, Unicorn is the only, one of two things in the game that lets you um, uh, heal multiple status effects at the same time. Um, Mog, there you go. Because we need to heal uh, Lock up, because now it's okay to attack with Lock. Um, because he won't counter during this part. Also, you're seeing I'm taking off my ice shields, and the reason, and then using them. I this way uh, they'll do a lot of ice damage. Uh, you saw with Mog, it did max damage, and uh, um, you know there's no reason to be defensive anymore because you're trying to kill him. So since you're trying to kill him fast, a lot of times in the very final part, we take off any elemental shields and we use them uh, in order to get that last bit of damage in. Um, so, uh, yeah, that went okay. Um, and, uh, like I said, we were playing this very casually. I played it very safe by going back out. I, I was stopping and talking about stuff, so the time's not too important. We actually were on a pretty good pace when we first went into the tower, considering the fact that we were stopping and talking and, and uh, 
taking things slow and everything because we were at one one eighteen when we went into the tower, um, which is uh, honestly pretty decent. Um, and you know, we slowed down at the end. Uh, had some tough bosses in that end gauntlet, um, some of which I should have reset and audible differently, and that was a big time waste. And so, you know, it's one of the things where you kind of never have to take your foot off the gas pedal while when playing this. Oops. Drop my controller. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jeff or Ben, like, I know I've been talk talking a lot. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully someone is helpful. Do you guys have any questions about anything that kind of happened or general questions about Worlds Collide or anything like that? Well, I just wanted to say you should probably throw up your time slot in your about on Twitch just so that way. Because <laughs> I know it's changed a couple times, but... Yeah, I, uh, outside, outside of you telling us, you know, I don't necessarily know how many people would necessarily be glued in on it right now. Well, part of it is that you're right; it's been changed a few times, which is why I haven't mentioned it as often. You know, my wife was, uh, you know, Kellen was um, was posting on GroupMe uh, for a while whenever it changed, and uh, it changed so many times. We just said, "Screw it; we'll post it later." Uh, why is my mouse not working? There it is. Um, SpongeBob beam is relevant now, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh boy, 3 a.m. Yep, uh, it is at 3.20 a.m. on Wednesday. Uh, let me get my calendar. I think it's June 28th. Um, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, also, my mouse is a strip not working right now. It's just a little weird. Um, June 29th, so exactly one month from today. And it's a set seed, right? You guys have already kind of, or someone's already pretty aware of the seed, or is it? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so actually, so I mentioned, I think before you came, I mentioned we had an incentive for saving or killing Sid, but there's a second incentive uh, before the game begins of picking our starting character um, that people can vote, because there's 14 characters in the game, and um I'm, I know that a lot of people who are fans of this game all have their favorite character, so people can donate for which character we start with. So we actually have a team of people vetting seeds uh, because we need a we need multiple seeds vetted uh, depending on what character gets uh, voted. Um, are, are there seeds that can result in like a soft lock essentially? That's uh, no, no, none can result in a soft lock. But um, I'm guessing that's because of the mod, but. Yes, um, I don't think I've ever had a soft, I've seen a soft, soft lock in this game. I think they, early on in development, were managed to um, stop that. Unlike unlike the Link to the Past or Orcarina Time randos that have a, um, a large number of chests with a lot of progression items, the progression is not as big here, so the logic is simpler for it. Um, the reason we vet seeds is for time estimate and difficulty. Um, that, uh, you know, we, we told GDQ would do this in an hour and 45 minutes. I'm sure if one runner doesn't finish in an hour and 45, it's fine, but it's very embarrassing if multiple of us can't finish in that time estimate. Um, so the, you know, the vetters are making sure that there's not a whole bunch of dead checks or there's a complete lack of offense that would cause us to slow down and have lengthy boss fights and things like that. Um, they're not doing anything crazy. It's mostly just making sure that we have a few options because I've definitely run seeds where the game decides to give me absolutely nothing. It decides uh, <laughs> that I'm not getting a single um, uh, anything. So um, hopefully it avoids that aspect. Why is my mouse strip not working? This is so weird. And I guess this is the first technically, physically uh, together sort of race that's going to have happened for the first like, like three or four years for your community, right? Like a race a few months ago in person, uh, but 
for the most part, none of us have ever met. Um, I, I think Worlds Clyde was first developed slightly before COVID, but it blew up when COVID started because everyone was stuck at home and it happened to be right right at the time this was getting big. So this, this radio is relatively new. It's only been around for uh, maybe less than three years. I, I don't know when it officially started, but I know the community started up uh, spring, summer of uh, 2020. I, I joined spring of 2021. Um, so yeah, uh, relatively new. Most of us have never met in person. So it's gonna be a lot of fun for the for us runners to kind of all meet up and everything. Um, but yeah, I have the answer to everyone's question, ff6wc.com, that's where you can go to generate seeds. There is a link to our Discord there, um, and uh, of course at our Discord we have plenty of resources, both um, documents and of course other users who can answer any questions. Uh, there is a wiki also linked at ff6wc.com that has a whole bunch of information. It explains every check in the game. Uh, and what you can find there it explains uh, every flag set option. Um, it has other guides. Um, I don't know if it's on the wiki, but Double Down here in chat wrote up a few weeks ago a very good Google Doc guide for new runners um, that I helped contribute a little bit on. And it was extremely useful. I thought it was a very good newcomer guide. Um, so if that's not on the wiki, Double Down, we should definitely get it on there. And then... Um, also, we just started our uh, our new ladder competition. Also, also hosted by Double Down here in chat, uh, called the Ultras League. That just started last night. Actually, um, they are a series of weekly uh, async races, so you, people can race them at their own leisure. Uh, you don't have to do them head to head. You can just have all you have to do is stream them um, and uh, record your time and. Uh, Depending on um, the first few weeks are preseason, depending on how uh, people do, um, their average times, they will be put into different uh, divisions, different uh, different um, pools of players of equal skill set. So they will then be competing during the season only against people that are hopefully roughly the same skill set in order to kind of keep competition uh uh, fresh, and then at the end of the season, uh, the top people in each division will move up a division, and the you know lower people will move down and uh, uh, be reset for the for the next season. So, uh, pretty cool. We do a lot of different tournaments, and they're all very different. And this is the first time we're trying this one, and uh, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's the plug of all kind of the cool things and resources and and all that. So, anything else from chat? Uh, Jeff or Ben, do you, have, do you have any other questions? And, uh, Jeff, I can send you the VOD of this, and, you know, because in the beginning I kind of explained a lot more of what you have to do to win, what the point of the rando is, um, uh, and everything, so that might help kind of... I, I feel like what to do to win, like, why you're going to different checks is the most important thing to, like, understand what's going on. Um, so... If you want yeah, to check I'll, that I'll out. Definitely, because I think that'll be helpful for Liz. Um, but the, the FF6WC link is honestly just an easy way to also read through it, it looks like. so. Yeah, but I'll send you the VOD. Like I explained it to Ben in the first few minutes of the VOD, so you only really have to watch the first few minutes to kind of explain, like, you know, what the goal is. What, you know, what what am I doing for an hour before I go to the final dungeon? Because uh, I feel like what, if you understand that, then the rest of it, you know, makes sense very, very quickly. Ugh. Yeah, I definitely understand this a lot better now. Thank you for doing this. No problem. Thank you guys for uh, for humoring me. Humoring me. This was uh, always a lot of fun, um, and it was kind of nice slowing down and um, also <laughs> showing how you can make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, imagine if I was running this fast, a lot of those mistakes get a lot worse because I'm trying to decide this stuff at a very quick pace, which is why this is a lot of fun to play. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that, and I would kick over someone else, but my mouse literally doesn't work, so I'm going to end the stream by physically turning my computer off to kill OBS. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, Bye for now, then. Uh, uh, oh, oh, real quick. One last question in chat. Yeah. 
Uh, we have, uh, who's the golden co tongue commentator I hear on the computer races sometimes? We have a lot of great commentators. I'm going to assume Double Down is talking about himself. Uh, uh, Double Down here is also a very good commentator. Him and I have been commentating a lot of races recently, and uh, we have a pretty good rapport. It's a lot of fun. Um, and he definitely makes up for my cascade of ums I like saying when I'm commentating. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, check out the community races, you'll be able to hear his sultry voice uh, as well because uh, he does a very good job. So I'll plug that real quick. So thanks, Double Down. And, uh, yeah, I'm now going to literally power my computer off to kill the stream. So I'll catch, I'll catch everyone later. See ya.